How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So today we are reviewing the Cocoon Create 3D printer. That's right, this is the 3D printer, the famous 3D printer that was sold at Aldi. Is it any good? Did people waste their money? Let's find out! So the Cocoon Create 3D printer made a massive stir not too long ago because it was the first 3D printer to ever be sold through a large retail chain through Aldi in Australia. This sort of thing had been never heard of before and it sort of took people by surprise because not only was it a 3D printer being sold at you know, a grocery store essentially, it's 3D printer being sold for 500 Australian dollars you know, with everything you need in the box. And with our current economy, $500 for a 3D printer of this scale is ludicrous. You can't even import a machine from China of this quality for that price. So it got a lot of people really excited and I myself went to my local Aldi store to see what the hype was like and yet people were waiting outside for the store to open to buy their Cocoon Create 3D printers and they sold out like that. So in terms of what's in the box, the Cocoon Create 3D printer comes flat packed which is great for shipping costs because shipping a machine in this configuration would be just lots of air. So this entire gantry actually flat packs down and it's assembled into place with four screws. So in terms of specifications, this machine has a build volume of 200 by 200 by 180 millimeters high, which is quite decent for a machine at this price point. It also has a heated bed and a single extruder extruding 1.75 mil filament. There's no cartridges here. You can fit any type of filament you like as long as it's 1.75 mil diameter. It may or may not work, but you can try it out. It also has an LCD screen with a dial which you can dial in your temperatures and movements directly on the machine and it's controlled either via the included USB cable or via the micro SD card you can load your G-code into using a variety of slicing programs. So you might be thinking to yourself, you know, Cocoon Create, that's an unknown brand. I've never heard of that 3D printing brand before and you'd be right. It's never been heard of before because it's a rebrand. This machine is a Wanhao Duplicator i3 version 2 and Cocoon Create is a new Australian brand for this printer and what they've done is essentially gotten a really good machine and value added to it for the Australian market. So Cocoon Create recommends their branded version of Cura, however I've been running mine exclusively on Simplify 3D with awesome results. In the box you get a couple of tools such as some Allen keys, a short amount of PLA filament, you get a scraper, this is one of the most sharpest scrapers by far I have come across in any 3D printer kit, it's sharpened on both edges and does fantastically well at getting prints off the build tack light surface. Going back to that surface, it is indeed pretty much build tack, but it's been rebranded and they give you a spare sheet in the box, which is awesome. There's also a handy dandy micro SD to standard SD adapter when you're loading it into your computer to get G code onto your printer. So about that value add, so this machine was sold through Aldi and for those who don't know, Aldi have a 60 day, no questions asked returns policy. So $500 for a 3D printer. The worst that could go wrong is it's not very good or it breaks. That gives you 60 days to go back to any Aldi store to return it. That's pretty good insurance if you ask me versus going to a company in China and getting a machine shipped across only to find that it got broken in transit. But there's more as well. The machine has a one year limited Australian warranty which is fantastic and it has a lot of documentation and that is the key. Clearly Cocoon Create has put a lot of effort into fine tuning how this machine works and how to tell their customers how to run it. For example, this machine not only comes with a getting started guide to get your machine assembled and printing its first files which come preloaded on the SD card, it also has an extremely in-depth manual. This manual covers everything you might want to know about your 3D printer. It covers how to use Cura, it covers how to level the bed, and it covers how to deal with any issues you may have including jams in the head. So this is the key. This has been well thought out and it means a newcomer into 3D printing has a guide a guide to running their new machine, despite it being only $500, it will get them up and running really quite easily. And it's well thought out because it means there's less people coming back to Cocoon Create and complaining about various things which they can cover in a manual. But how does it print? I mean, it doesn't matter how good a manual for a 3D printer is. If it doesn't work well, if the prints don't look good, then it's not really worthy, is it? Well, I've been printing various different filaments on my Cocoon Create to test it out and it started with of course, their branded filaments. So they had their own brand of PLA plastic they were selling through Aldi as well. And a lot of people were wondering how good quality this stuff was because it was $35 Australian per kilo, which to my knowledge, it's the cheapest you can get a kilo of filament in Australia from a retail premises. 
And to everyone's surprise, not just mine, the filament worked fantastically. This is the vase that comes preloaded on the SD card, printed in their neon green PLA. Now the neon green isn't actually that neon, it's more of a lime green or a leaf green, but the quality is perfect. You need to put a little bit of effort into dialing the bed level down, that's the hardest part of uh, dealing with these, this type of machine. But once it's dialed in and you've got that level height correct, you can get amazing prints. And this is a Deathclaw bus. So this is the head of a Deathclaw I pulled from Fallout and then subdivided to make him smoother. And that's printed in the Cocoon Create green PLA. And the quality is phenomenal. I printed this really fast with only 10% infill and it looks perfect. It looks really, really good. The support material as well broke away beautifully. Again, I'm using Simplify 3D to do this. So the support material in Simplify 3D tends to be a bit better than Cura, but either way, the filament and the printer works awesomely. Next, I tried out the recycled PLA from Filamentive, and again, I got awesome results after I dialed it in. And this is the thing. This machine is producing prints in PLA that look fantastic. And several years ago, you would have had to spend a lot more money to get this level of print quality off a machine pretty much out of the box. All I've done to calibrate it is set the, the bed level. And even then, I haven't actually tried that hard to get it perfectly. I've done nothing else to it, which is really, really cool. And finally, I'm trying out some wood filament on this machine. So be careful with wood filament. It can be a little bit tricky to print with, but this bender head looks amazing. And it printed with 0% infill and printed very quickly in about two hours or so and I am just blown away by it. So there's, there'll be a review of this filament coming very soon. So where does that leave us with the Cocoon Create? Well, this machine has proven to be so popular in Australia that there's now an extremely active Facebook group for it. It's already a friendly community and it's clear to see that's because most people have had a really positive experience with this machine. Now that's not to say it's completely without its issues. There's a few things with this machine you need to be careful with. For a start, the filament holder at the top, if I remove this filament, this is not a handle. Do not ever pick your machine up from this point because it will just bend. And that's kind of the thing. This machine, this design is not really transportable. This umbilical cable that joins the power supply to the machine, very fragile. If you dropped it or snagged it, it might break one of these delicate wires and then you'd be up a creek. Do not try to put this machine in a car for long hauls because any vibrations on this gantry will throw it out of skew and you're going to end up on the machine that starts printing worse and worse and you're not gonna be able to do much about it. Definitely, if you're looking to buy this kind of machine, you wanna buy it and put it somewhere and just print happily with it. You don't want to be transporting it. So many of the issues I originally encountered with my version one Wanhal duplicator i3 have been fixed. There's various improvements to this machine that make it a much more stable, much more reliable 3D printer than those very earlier i3 designs. But there's one niggling thing that still annoys me. The belt for the x-axis still rubs against the linear bearings. And that's just inexcusable. So over time, your belt will become thinner, it'll rub the, the rubber off, and you will need to replace it much sooner than if it wasn't rubbing on anything. Now, it doesn't affect the performance of the machine, but it will affect things long term. So really, those bearings should have been made smaller, or the distance between the belt and the bearing should have been increased to stop that problem. So people are already taking their bearings out and filing down a bit of the metal to clear that. It's a really easy fix, and it will fix that problem but it should have, shouldn't be there in the first place. Now the cooling fan also isn't pointed directly at the nozzle, it's actually pointed off to one side, which can lead to some inaccuracies in terms of cooling down your PLA prints. So I recommend something like this, which is a cheap desk fan. And I usually put this just here, and then run cool air consistently across the print as it's going. And this seems to greatly improve my print quality for very little cost. So I mentioned this machine is a rebrand of the Wanhal Duplicator i3 version two, and because of that, there's various modifications for that machine that will fit seamlessly onto this one. For example, there's community generated air ducts that will improve the cooling quality of this fan from stock. And of course, one of the first improvements I would do, which I haven't done on mine yet, is to replace the very annoying wing nuts for bed leveling with thumb screws. So the machine actually comes with those designs on its SD card ready to go. I highly recommend printing them out, getting some M3 nuts and replacing those wing nuts because it's going to be much easier to level your bed with those. So I guess that takes us to the conclusion and the question, where do you buy Cocoon Create should you want one? And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So WinPlus is the company that brought the Cocoon Create into Australia and you can go to the Cocoon Create website 
to buy filament. They have lots of different types as well as the PLA plastics that you can buy straight from their website. However, you cannot buy the Cocoon Create from their website due to an exclusivity deal with Aldi, which is a bit of a shame, but it means the machines got into Aldi in the first place. So if you want to get your hands on a Cocoon Create 3D printer, hit up your local Aldi and see what they're doing with stock levels. They may indeed be bringing more in because they proved to be so popular. And I really hope they do because I want to see more of these machines out into the hands of our Australians because they're great printers and at 500 bucks, they are the best deal at the moment to get into 3D printing. There is literally nothing else at this price point that delivers this performance. So WinPlus did send me the Cocoon Create to do a review on, however no money has changed hands and all comments and opinions are my own. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this review on the Cocoon Create 3D printer. I've had a great time using it and there's going to be plenty more 3D prints where these came from. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more 3D printing content on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe, it helps me out a lot and I'll see you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.